God, we thank you for your will, your word, and way. Speak to me and speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer, open up our eyes that we can see what you're showing us. Open up our ears that we can hear what you're telling us. Open up our hearts that we be receptive to your word. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. John chapter 16, 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 verse number 13, John chapter 16, verse number 13, John chapter 16, verse number 13, amen. Now, after praise like that, ain't but one thing you can say. I know he's all right. Let me leave y'all alone. Ooh. I, I didn't mean to throw that log on the floor. Hey, I know he's all right. When you, when, you got the, when you got the text, just shout, I got it. The word of the Lord says, the word of the Lord says, uh, I'm not reading from the thundering diction of the King's James this morning, but I'm, I'm reading from the New American Standard Version this morning. It simply says these words, but when he, watch this, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. Yeah. This morning, I just want to relay the message that the Holy Spirit gives direction. Yeah. That's what I want to talk about. The Holy Spirit gives direction. Y'all do me a favor. Would you just shout these words? Come on. Come on. Holy Spirit. Holy you may be seated. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, give me, y'all, give me, y'all, give the preacher a little, a little second. Uh, the word, the word, the word direction has great meaning, but we have great trouble following direction. As a people of God, we got no trouble with accepting guidance than folks that are outside of the church. Uh, I believe that the problem is that we all, in some shape, form of capacity, feel that we ought to be in charge. And the only problem with that is that everybody can't be in charge. Notice that the scriptures teach us to do the things that are hardest to do because most of us have a hard time disciplining ourselves with doing the things that are necessary for our well-being as it comes to our spirit man. And I have found, brothers and sisters, that when we can get to the position where we can accept leadership and direction, we are on our way to a place that the Bible says the weary shall cease from troubling and the wicked shall be at rest. Did I say that backwards? That's all right. It's going on the same place. The idea is that sometimes it's hardest to humble ourselves in the service of God because we think we know what's best. But I want you to try something. I want you to try learning how to pray for your leadership. And the reason I say learn how to pray for your leadership is because it does not just go for inside the church. But if you are up under somebody's leadership, whether you are in spirit or in secular, you have to learn how to humble yourself enough to be able to take some orders. 
Notice that you can't do nothing about what people do to you. But you can do everything about what you do to other folks. And the idea is, is that even though you may not like the boss, even though you may not like the auxiliary chair, and I know ain't nobody in here got this issue, but even though you may not like the pastor, Lord have mercy, you ought to learn how to pray for you to be able to follow leadership. Some of us don't understand that following leadership, brothers and sisters, is the kind of thing that takes great power. But it takes the power that only God could give to us after the Son left and gave the Holy Spirit. And in our text, brothers and sisters, he shows us that guidance or direction is defined as supervision. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Because there are some leaders who don't understand that if I'm in charge of something, I'm just a supervisor. And if I'm supervising something, that means somebody else is over me. And as I supervise the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, understand that somebody is over me. And I get my direction from above. And he tells me just what to do. But in our text, brothers and sisters, if, if, if we don't have the spirit of humility, we will find ourselves in trouble and then having to go back to the good leadership to help us get out of the trouble that our horrible mentality got us in in the first place. Uh, leadership, brothers and sisters, is not something that we shoot from the hip. But it's something that takes time and prayer and a great amount of study to do effectively. And in our text we find where the writer is giving sound direction from the greatest source. And to be honest with us, this source is uh, giving us a great harsh reality for those of us that are born again Christians. John gives, brothers and sisters, to the churches uh, some information that, that he gives to us from the mouth of Jesus. So Jesus begins this discourse, brothers and sisters, with a great big bang. Because he has to now give some information to the people that are up under the sound of his voice that they may not really want to receive yet. And he said, the stuff is about to hit the fan, y'all. You can replace stuff with what you want to. I'm in the pulpit today. We can't talk like that, but it's about to hit the fan. In the text, brothers and sisters, it's about to hit the fan. Why is it about to hit the fan? It's about to hit the fan because Jesus Christ has to give them some news that's saying, I'm about to leave here. Right. Notice, notice he says, I'm about to give you some information that I could not give you before because I was with you. Right. You don't miss this. I was with you, and now that I'm about to leave you, I've got to prepare you. It's about to hit the fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice, brothers and sisters, I can't be next to you to remind you of the word of God and how you ought to react and, and respond to certain situations in life, but the Holy Spirit can recall you into right direction. Yes. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is the word of God. Right. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. If I'm going to be directed by God, I have to know what the text tells me to do. And Jesus tells him, it's about to hit the fan, y'all. I'm on my way out of here. And as I get ready to leave here, I got to tell you, it's some stuff about to happen. They get ready to tell y'all that you can no longer come into the synagogues. They're getting ready to tell you all that, that, that you are not allowed in this place because of who you choose to belong to. Uh, this, this area that y'all live in, brother, brother Jews and sister Jews that have been converted into Christianity, has no longer wanted to welcome you into this section. And as a matter of fact, Jesus says to them, they are going to kill some of y'all. And when they kill some of y'all, when they murder some of y'all, what they're going to do is they're going to justify their cause by saying, I did it in the name of God. I wish I had some people that would go and pray with me for a minute because I want you to understand that right now they're trying to lynch Christianity. 
Right now, the world is trying to say Christianity is for the dummies. Right now, the world is trying to make us look like we are the oddballs and the weird folk because we believe in something supernatural that we cannot really see, but we can possess with on the inside. They're talking to us like we are crazy because we don't agree with certain things, and because we don't agree with certain things, they make us out to be the bad guy. But brothers and sisters, all I want you to understand is that in the text, Jesus is telling them what to expect. And I'm telling you today, brothers and sisters, you ought to expect all of this. He says, he, he says, he says, he says, I ain't make mention of all this before. And, and I, I know, I, I, I now am because I'm getting ready to leave. And, and, and y'all are looking at him. He's having dialogue with these folks. And Jesus is looking at their faces and he's saying, y'all are looking at me like you want to ask me a question, but you got the rock in your throat so you can't get the words out, right? You ever been in a situation where somebody gave you some bad news and you couldn't even say nothing? It, it caught you off surprise, off guard, and, and, and that, that throat started getting dry and your, your eyes started getting watery. The people couldn't even ask him, where are you going? They, they could not even get out of their mouth. Uh, 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 what, what is it that, that I'm getting ready to do, Jesus? I, I, I don't understand. They couldn't even get it out of their mouth. And before uh, uh, they, could, they, could, they could even, brothers and sisters, start to ask him some questions, he started to coax them with, with this new news of the fact that he was getting ready to show them something new. Watch this because he says, I got to go, but, but, but I'm going, and my going is good for you. Look at what he does. He said, if I don't leave here, I, I won't be able to prepare a place for you. If I don't leave here, what I have for you won't be received. If I don't leave here, prophecy will not be fulfilled. If I don't leave here, the spirit of truth cannot come. Right, this is what he's saying in the text. He's saying to them, I got to leave because I got a few things I got to do that I won't be able to do down here because the Father wants me to do it somewhere else. I've got to go back to the one that sent me here so that I can take care of some business, but I'm sending you some help. Preach, Pastor Riddick. He says, he says, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. I'm sending you the spirit of truth. And, and, and when I send the Holy Spirit, he has a job to do. Notice his job is to convict the sin of the world because they do not believe. Anytime you do not believe in God through Jesus Christ, you are going to be convicted by the word of God. But then he says he is going to watch this direct, mm, direct the believers in righteousness. Now, watch this. While Jesus was there with them, he was directing them into, into righteousness. But when Jesus leaves the scene, he says it's going to be the Holy Spirit's job to direct you in righteousness, which shall be the word of God. But then the third thing that, that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth would do is it's going to convict judgment on the, uh, um, uh, on, 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 the, on, the, on the world because they do not believe. Now watch this. He cannot convict judgment on the God of this world because the God of this world has been what? Judged. Y'all remember last week when we talked about the God of this world? The God of this world, of this world is what? Satan himself. He's directing the things that are going on down here. And while he is directing the orchestra on in this world, God is trying to get you to lift him up from the earth. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had somebody. We told you last week that the world and the earth were two different things. The world is that which the what? The, the devil has what? Influence. But the earth is the ground that God made and if I can what find the establishment of what God has made and created and stand on top of what he has created and lift him up y'all yeah. he said he'll do the work by drawing all men unto himself then, then Jesus ends his discourse brothers and sisters by telling them he had so much more that he wanted to tell them but if he told them anything else they wouldn't be able to handle it Understand, y'all ever had somebody try to tell you something and you wasn't ready to hear it? Yeah. You'd be like, don't tell me no more, I can't handle it no more. Jesus, Jesus told him, no, I ain't telling you nothing else because you would not be able to handle it. So then when we arrive at the focus of our text, Christ tells these believers, 
just how he's going to relay the rest of his message. He says, I'm getting ready to tell you the rest of my message, but it ain't going to come through me. It's going to come through my spirit. And the first thing, and the first thing that he tells them is that the spirit is coming. The doctrine of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, can sometimes be complicated to understand if we are not familiar with the scriptures. Uh, there are many names in scripture that refer to the, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit or the spirit of truth, as the text refers to it, is what we call the third person of the Godhead. I remember the Godhead is manifested in three manifestations. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we coined this called the Trinitarian belief. We call it Trinitarian because we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God in three persons. There are some that say that God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three different gods. And they call them Unitarians. But we're not Unitarians. We believe in the Trinitarian belief that there was one God manifested as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now listen, I'm teaching this morning, but I got something to give you because God the Spirit is not inferior to the other two. And that means he's not beneath them. He, he's not some side piece. He, he, he's not the leftover meal. God the Spirit is equal in value. He's a part of the Godhead. And, and this, brothers and sisters, is important because it helps us to understand that just like God is to be worshipped, just like Jesus is to be praised, so is the Holy Spirit to receive thanks. Somebody just shout, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the text helps me to understand that, that he, he, is, he, is, he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And while he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I want to know how is it possible for all three of them to be equal. Can I give you a few nuggets for the road? Here it is. Look at the Old Testament and the New Testament. And all throughout, they refer, through, refer to the Holy Spirit in these such names. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of our God. The spirit of Jesus, yeah. his spirit, right. and my favorite, God is a spirit. Yeah. And so Jesus said to them, the spirit of truth is coming. And, and not only is the spirit of truth coming, but then he tells us that the spirit has something to do. Look at your neighbor and say, what is the spirit coming to do? Come on, say it again. What is the spirit coming to do? The Holy Spirit has one job. And his job is to give direction. Now, for those of us that don't like to take directions, we're going to find ourselves in trouble all the time. Every time we turn around, we're going to see that we always in trouble. Every time we turn around, we're trying to look to God for some help, and he's trying to give us directions. We don't want to follow it, so now we're going to end up in the same situation that we've always been in. Those of us that are trying to leave stuff alone and can't leave it alone, it's because we won't follow directions. Those of us that are trying to keep away from certain people and we can't seem to find ourselves away from them, it's because we cannot follow directions. God is trying to tell us something. Ain't that an old saying? God is really trying to tell us something, but we won't hear him and receive him. Uh, uh, God, gives, God gives the message to the Holy Spirit. And, and he, says, he says, relay the message. Guide the believer. And he's only going to say what God will say. Why is that? Because he will not disagree with what the Son has said. The Son is the living word of God. And since he is the living word of God, what comes out of his mouth is gospel. Yeah. And the gospel is what the Holy Spirit will always reveal to God's people. Right. Holy Spirit will not say anything against his teachings. The text says that he will tell them of the things that will come. Right. He will glorify God by declaring what is God's into the heart of those that believe. Brothers and sisters, it's nothing but the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is utilizing my life and my speech to be able to share with you the oracles of God. And he's saying unto us right now, trust in the Lord because he will never let you down. Preach, Pastor Reddick. I'm doing the best I can with what I've got and all i got is the text. And the text said that the Spirit came to direct me. He said, he says, he says, he says, the spirit of truth, he said the spirit of truth is coming. He said that the spirit of truth 
has a job to do. But watch this, y'all. My shout in the text, and I'm done. I finished this thing real quick, didn't I? Jesus said, Jesus said, my shout in the text is that you ought to rely on the Spirit. <laughs> Go on, preach, Michael Redding. And so if I'm relying on the Spirit, brothers and sisters, there is nothing that can hinder me from what God says is already mine. You ever heard somebody say, it's yours, go on and walk into it? Watch how you deal with that because some of us can't walk into it because we cannot follow directions. Some of us thought that was a part of the charismatic movement. No, you can walk into your blessing if you're going to follow God's directions. But if you can receive what God has for you, oh, you can have what he has for you. Psalms chapter 25 says, make me know your ways, O Lord. Yeah. Teach me your path. Yeah. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. Yeah. For I will wait all the day. The psalmist is saying, Lord, I rely on you. Yeah. Psalms chapter 27 says, teach me your way. Oh, Lord, I'm going somewhere. Teach me your way, oh, Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my foes, my, my enemies. Do not deliver me over to the desires of my adversaries. The psalmist is simply declaring, Lord, I rely totally on you. Psalms 86 says to us, teach me. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Teach me your way, oh, Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. The psalmist is simply saying, what? Lord, I rely on you. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Oh, brothers and sisters, Psalm 119 and 33 says, teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes. And I shall observe all of them to the end of time. Brothers and sisters, the psalmist over and over again is telling us that he is relying on, on the Lord. I'm getting ready to close here this morning, but I wanted us to understand that the Bible testifies of the fact that there are plenty of people who have decided to trust and rely on the Lord. And if we learn how to rely on the Spirit of God, he can teach us his ways. And if we will receive his ways, then he can direct our paths. Yeah. The songwriter helps me this morning by telling me, let the Spirit God lead you. Let him lead you all the way from earth to heaven. Let the Spirit lead you all the way have I got a witness in this church this morning I want you to know he's a mighty good leader yes he is let him lead you all, all the way excuse me y'all but I feel like preaching for a minute. Can I drag this thing for a few seconds? But I want us to understand that I need you to see that the Spirit ought to lead you by directing your thinking. Let the Spirit lead you by directing your seeing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Is he all right in here? Can you say it? Let the Lord direct my hearing. Lord, I want to hear a word from you. Say to me, Lord, what you want me to hear. Teach me your way. Oh, Lord, that I might be able to see you one day. Direct me, Lord, so that I can do 
what I need to do. <laughs> Direct me, Holy Spirit, so that I can go to where I need to go. The songwriter said, bless my going on and my coming in. Put your spirit round about and your joy within. The songwriter said, spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, mold me, melt me, feel me, and use me. Psalm is said, created me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Purge me, Lord, with the of and wash me, Lord, white as snow. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? And if I don't do anything else, I'm through, y'all. But if I don't do anything else, I can tell you what I shall do. I shall, every chance I get, defend my faith. I shall, every chance I get, tell the whole story. I shall, every chance I get, share my Jesus. Tell them what my God has done. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But it doesn't stop right there. I'll tell the world that he healed the sick and he raised the dead. I'm feeling real Baptist this morning. He made the blind to see. He made the dumb to talk. And he made the lame to walk. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Is there anybody in here that knows my Jesus? Anybody in here know my Lord? He died. Didn't he die? Yeah. Didn't he die? Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, you're not shaking your neighbor. But shake your neighbor and say, neighbor, he died. Didn't he die on an old rugged cross for your sins and mine? They put him in a borrowed tomb. But early, come on, help me one early. early, early. morning he rose didn't he get up yeah yeah oh yeah 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 I know he's all right let him lead you Jesus sent him. He's got a job to do. So rely on him. I give it to you again. Jesus sent him. He's got a job to do. So rely on him. Jesus sent him. He's got a job to do. Rely on him. That's all I want to tell you this morning. The Holy Spirit gives direction. Let him lead you. You can't get to God without him. Let him lead you all the way, not some of the way, not part of the way, but every step of the way. Don't let nobody tell you he ain't able. Don't let nobody tell you that he can't do it. But Jesus can do it. Won't he do it? Come on, won't he do it? Yeah, come on, brothers. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, if you've never let him direct you, yeah. 